helps her clients live in balance with everything that feeds us in addition to the food on our plate. Please welcome your host, Debbie Carlin Boyle. Yay! Hi, guys. <laughs> welcome. Welcome back to a Tuesday afternoon, the second Tuesday of the month. And here we are. This is Balanced Life with me, your host. I'm Debbie Carlin Boyle, and I'm Conversations That Connect to a Healthier You. Thank you for joining me today. I want to invite you to, if you're watching on Facebook, to make a comment or ask a question. I also want to invite you, if you are watching live, at ubngo.com or my Facebook page to call in. And or listening live, you can call in. So the number here is 323-524-2599. That's 323-524-2599. At any point, if you feel compelled to become part of the conversation, to ask a question or make a comment, just give us a call. If you're listening after the fact and can't call in live, go ahead and make a comment or ask a question on my uh, Facebook page or on my YouTube channel and myself or my guest today will get right back to you. I all want, also want to tell you that I am a health coach and a personal trainer and a fitness instructor and I help people who might be going th through something in their life where they need an accountability coach to help them navigate it and I help people do that whether it's a food issue, an exercise issue, uh, something with finances or career, all these things are interconnected and I can help you find balance in all of them. I give free introductory sessions, so just get a hold of me by going to my website, which is balancedlifebydebbie.com. That's balancedlifebydebbie.com. -E and right there, there's a way to connect with me. I also have programs for groups, a 30-day reset that I'd be, I'd be so happy to help you with. So go ahead and seek me out. And now for today's show, you're really going to like this show today um, because I think it applies. Whether you're a man or a woman, the show is going to apply to you. So my guest today is Dr. Stephen Poulter. He is a renowned licensed clinical psychologist in private practice here in West Los Angeles, California. He has been providing professional mental health services to clients for well over 36 years. Dr. Poulter is a public speaker on parenting, adolescence, and spiritual psychological issues. He's also the author of seven books, which includes Your X Factor, The Mother Factor, Father Your Son, The Father Factor, The Art of Successful Failure, and his latest book, which is The Shame Factor. So now today, we're going to talk all about men's health, and we're going to break it down to the physical, the emotional, the relational, and not to be missed, masculinity, all that aspect of it as well. So that's certainly of interest to me. So will you please welcome our resident expert in all things dealing with our psychological health, my guest and my friend, Dr. Stephen Poulter, to the show. <laughs> Thank Hello, you. Stephen. Well, Hi. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me. I think we're on number eight. Eight. <laughs> here we are. Wow. I know. And, you and are. every time I do, it's like I've never done it before. So thank you, Debbie, for the opportunity to come on and talk with you about uh, life, balance, men. Yeah, we haven't done a show about men before and how important they are to everything in life in relationships yes. and um and how important it is to be a good strong father figure for your sons and your daughters for that matter but also just men mm -hmm. play such an important role and lately i think you know they've been tossed around a little bit and um yeah. you're i know you're writing a book you're researching the book and um Correct. we're gonna dig into some of the aspects of that book yes um but i'm gonna make you do it again because because where you being a clinical psychologist has meaning for you because of the two careers that you had before this 
So I want you to give a short little background for somebody who di hasn't listened to any of the seven other shows. Um, and I have to say, I this is how I found Stephen. So Stephen wrote a book, as I mentioned at the top, called The X Factor. And I have an ex, and I was newly into uh, separation and going through a very contentious divorce. Mm -hmm. And I read that book, and I turned it over. And on the back, there was the picture of you, of Stephen. And it said that you practice in Brentwood, California. And I'm like, well, I live there. So I called you. Yes. You called me right back. And we've been working together on and off ever since. So, And I adore you, as you know. Aww. And it's mutual, Debbie. You're very kind. Thank well, you. Well, you've helped me through a lot. And in any way I can help you, I'm happy to highlight all the wonderful things that you're doing for others. But tell everybody about your beginnings, your background, because I find that so intriguing. You know, I, I, I think it's embarrassing at times to talk about it. Not, not embarrassing. It's embarrassing, okay? <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about their history, but we all have one. And I feel like I've had a number of lives. I'm a, in a current one in a good way. Yes. But when I was in college, um, the police department came on campus recruiting. And their whole approach was, let's make a difference in the city you live in. And I remember thinking, kind of like the movie Born on July 4th, the Tom Berenger character comes on to, the, you know, to speak to a group of us. And it really moved me. And I became a police officer for eight years. And I think going to graduate school was really important. But being a police officer for eight years, I saw so much of what's going on right now. I didn't see that kind of misuse of power, but versus the breadth and depth of humans suffering, trying to help people, and just the whole um, scale, whole broad spectrum of dealing with people and all sorts of circumstances, crises, and challenges. And it really grew me up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I feel like Oliver Stone, I feel like I went to Vietnam and um, as a boy, came back as a young man. And during that time, I went to seminary because I always wanted to work with people. And police work was working with people, but it's kind of like we came in, handled the crisis, and then we left. I used to think about that. Like we'd make it, like, it was always hard. I always seemed to get picked to make the death notice, if you will, drive over the family's home and tell them that their son was killed in a motorcycle accident, mm -hmm. like at two in the morning. And they'll like, take as long as you want. And I remember thinking, leaving some of these homes, like, who's going to clean this mess up? Mm -hmm. These poor people are like, their life just got blown up. You wanted to be on the other end of that and right. helping and it was them always my get through deep that. Down. And going to seminary, it was more of a spiritual experience. And that kind of understand the bigger picture, the divine side of us, the spiritual side of us. And that led me into psychology and hence the books, the mother factor, the father factor, the X factor, and currently the shame factor. Mm -hmm. And where I am right now is talking about men's health and masculinity, a 360 overview. And what that's about is helping men of all ages, starting age teenagers all up through 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, about how to, what's men's health, um, emotional health, relational health, masculinity, and kind of like their higher purpose in life. So you have That's, those four areas that are sort of your titles. Yeah, four, the, exactly. Yeah. The men's health and masculinity 360 overview. And I've been working with other groups of men uh, group show up fathers, the, the mind barbershop group to help men become more emotionally uh, engaged. That's what I think women want deep down. To yeah. be a good dad. Or, or partners. Be, yeah. Or would a good want. partner. Yeah. yeah. However, is, we call it. Yeah. And the other thing what we're talking about has nothing to do with sexual orientation. Relate, men are men, women are women, and how they interact, whether it be a gay couple, a straight couple, a mixed couple, it's still people and how they feel about themselves and how they relate to others. And the biggest relationship you have is one with yourself. And I find with a lot of men, they're not really aware of the connection between their physical health, their emotional health, relationship health, and masculinity. Kind of like that full yep. 360 circle. Amen. How it's all interrelated. And how shame gets in there and 
you know, fly in the ointment messes the whole thing, whole thing up. And that so, kind of starts yeah. from parenting day one, the way their parent both from their mother's side and yep. their father's side. And you, I mean, I know that's true for women too. It's just it's a mm -hmm. processing issue, I think, yeah. in terms of of the parenting. And I mean, fathers and sons, and you know, you do have a book about this, but it are very yes. complicated. And you know, we see a lot of. Mm -hmm. um, acting out on the parts, let's say, of the sons because there are anger issues because of not having a good relationship with their father or having an absentee father in their childhood. Isn't that you know, true? Absolutely. I've never seen – you know, one thing all gang, mem gang members have in common – I remember learning this in my 20s. The one thing they had in common besides anger, that was one bond. The second bond was an absent father, mm -hmm. whether he had passed away – or was in prison, or they never met him, but he was absent. And daughters and mothers identifying the same-sex parent is very powerful, but it's very difficult when you can't identify the same-sex parent, or you don't know them, you don't have a relationship with them, mm -hmm. or you never met them. And for boys, that vacuum many times gets filled with rage, and with other boys who share the same frustration and anger and act it out. And I, we see this in adolescents going in their 20s, 30s, on up the food chain, you know, and I really, it's always weighed heavy on me. And that's why I, I find, as a psychologist, help men to develop their emotional IQ. Yeah. And that's the ability that's to important. articulate, Debbie. What are your feelings? It sounds simple until you feel it. Right. And, and I find, I mean, there's, you know, part of what I do, I find part of this 360 has mm -hmm. to do with, um, you know, we were t you were talking about the, the best relationship you have w is with yourself. Well, in, for what I do as a health coach, I find mm -hmm. um, men's self-care comes into play with anger issues, with angst, with the way they treat others in their lives. And, of course, right. we always treat those closest to us the worst than we do to strangers, right? And, and we, we're almost pushing them away. And I find with men, if I start working backwards, I see, and, and this is true for women too, but a lot yeah. of time, um, any kind of rage or anger or angst that men uh, are holding on to, um, they also are not eating well, they're not exercising, they're exactly. not sleeping well, they have, because they're not in check with their emotional self, their whole self-care from the physical self part of it in diet is not coming together. It's off. Yeah. 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 Deb, there's, there's a saying, if you bury your emotions alive, they're never going to die. You can't bury your emotions because they're not going to die. And so much of men's health problems, look at their emotional health, their relational health, and the masculine health. Those three are your physical health. They're so interconnected. They're all part They're of each other. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They, have I, to, they have to connect together in order for you to be your best version of you. Correct. You know, and you can't. If you're, if you're stifling the emotional stuff that's so deep set that you're not letting it come to the surface. Correct. So if we were to break it down, um, I know, you, so we talked about the yeah. four areas of focus. So we have the physical, the emotional, the relational, and then masculinity and how to be a high functioning man we're going to talk about that in sort of an yes. anti um anti-male climate these days right uh, it's a little trickier and things a are trickier but yeah. nonetheless just it's as needed as it's ever been but it's very needed it's and i big think time for women because for our oh, benefits as well we are being you know we mm -hmm. were um uh made to feel like we were just um, tokens in sort of the game, you know, I know going up through the ranks, I had my versions yeah. of Harvey, the Harvey Weinsteins all along the way being in the film industry. And yeah. you, we put up with it, you know, because men didn't know better. They didn't know better and they got away with so much. So we'll talk about that because there's so many good things and it's a, it's a right. hard thing. There's so many good people out there and yeah. yet they might have a little bit of fear about navigating how to be in this sort of anti-male climate. Correct. So, 
Um, sh- should we break it down from starting with yes. the physical, but, maybe? You know, I want to start with maybe. I want to start with the relational. Okay, let's because do that. Because men that learn how to separate and individuate from their mother mm-hmm. are great partners. Okay, so that's that's great. They become great partners. That makes sense. And as I say to men, you can't marry your mother and you can't bring her in your relationship. And again, this has nothing to do with orientation. Each man that is able to separate and leave his mom at home, metaphorically, and go out and create his life, it doesn't mean he's not connected to her, but his own life has a higher level of satisfaction, more fulfilling relationships, and also able to empower and connect with their partner in a very um, adult, satisfying, productive way. And their partner doesn't become a crutch to kind of fill in the gaps from their childhood. Because when you separate from your mom, I see this with so many men, the ability to separate from her and tolerate the disappointment of not being the perfect son or doing what intuitively your mom wanted you to do is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And it helps you in your adult life to create and follow through on what you really want to do and create strong relationships with other men. Because... Having relationships with other men allows you to have strong relationships with other women. Absolutely. It's not the other way around. If you, have, if you can connect with men, you can also connect with women. And that would be to their advantage to be Correct. able to have now, those relationships I, with men. There were so many women are like yourself. Like, you guys, we, we love you and adore you. Don't be – come on. I think so many men are gun-shy right now because of the all the stuff that's gone on. And mm-hmm. you see men didn't know better. I, I think – Part of our job as dads to, is to install a thermostat inside our sons. You wouldn't buy a house without a thermostat. Mm-hmm. So why would we send our sons out into the world with no boundaries or checks or balances or moral compass? You know, And I find that many men that violate women have a sense of entitlement mm-hmm. and never were able to separate from their mother. And many times it's mm-hmm. acting out against women. It sounds terrible, but – there's a lot of research to support that. So that sense of entitlement, mm-hmm. how does the your mother and father come factor into that in the way you're raised? You know, it's interesting. As I used to say, dad's job is to create the guardrails. Mom's job is to help the son navigate the road. You need both. Now, many kids don't have both. Many sons didn't have both. But that doesn't mean you can't learn to navigate the road of, of life and not drive off the road and be reckless and um, exploit or take advantage of other people. And part of that is civilizing sons. There's a book that came out maybe 20 years ago about uh, boys and boys having a language, having emotional intelligence, and getting them out of this gag order, like this gray masking tape across their face. They can't, unless they're angry, or happy, that's all the emotions they can ever express. And there's like huge world in between, Deborah. And that's part of what I find with men that are civilized, that don't exploit women or themselves or others, have that internal compass installed. Yeah, and I I would, I I still feel there's a little general, you're absolutely right what the mission of a parent should be, but I think there's a generational thing, and I think the awareness now is much more open and in the forefront. So yes. women aren't going to be objectified. Women are right. equal, getting to be equals in the workplace, whereas men ca- are going to be equals at home. You know, we're, you know, we're that's, a, that's a really good point, Deb. Yeah, there's more equality outside the house and inside the house, mm-hmm. it, it, which is really important. It's a give and take, but you, you know, and I think that's a good thing for everybody, for men to learn, like you're saying that men are, you know, tiptoeing right now, and and especially those that aren't perhaps in a relationship. I'm in the dating scene, and I also Mm -hmm. have a 32-year-old daughter in the dating scene, so I see it from two different generations. And a lot of the men that I've dated in the last Mm -hmm. couple of years, since the Me Too movement, even before that, have you know said you know uh, I I, I want to be because they are part of my generation right that that right. wasn't quite out in the open yet and they are saying well I I want it 
you know, make sure there are, I hold my boundaries here. And now, and right. they're asking, whereas I grew up in an age, and you and I are, uh, you're younger than Years. me, but I grew yes. up in an age where there wasn't a lot of asking, is this okay? Is it all right? If I kiss you or beyond, you know, I wasn't asked that. Now I'm being asked that. And so is my daughter. Um, and that's what this has opened up, this, this Me Too sort of movement. And I'm gl glad because I think it makes yeah. men step back and have to rethink about objectifying us. You know? Jim, and I agree. And Deborah, also what's great about the Me Too movement, you know, there's a statistic that says three out of four women have been violated at some point in their life sexually. I believe that. Mm. And there's another stat that it's hard to believe that maybe one out of four guys have been violated. I think it's one out of three. Mm, and the probably. Me Too movement has brought into the light how abuse has no regard for race, creed, color, or zip code, or economics. And part of the 360 overview, masculinity is the ability to have empathy with boundaries. Oh, I love that. I Men love that. Men with empathy, with boundaries, can help change the world. I want to find one of those. We're going to take a, our first break and we're going to come right back. Let's talk about that. Yes. Masculinity, empathy with boundaries. Let's get into that. We'll be right back after this message. I have been a wine enthusiast for many decades, but for a while I had to stop drinking wine because of the sleepless nights and the headaches that I would have in the morning even after only one glass. Does this sound familiar? So for the past five years, and since the start of my show, I've been looking for a healthy wine, and finally I found the answer I've been looking for, Dry Farm Wines. Dry Farm Wines are lab-tested for purity, just 12.5% alcohol or less, 0.15 grams of sugar or less per glass, very low sulfites, and free of toxic additives. Dry Farm Wines are dry-farmed with healthy, biodiverse soil, and the taste bright and vibrant due to no manipulation. I can't say enough about the amazing wines that I've tried. And now you too can drink wine and not worry about how it is negatively affecting your health. Just go to dryfarmwines.com forward slash balanced life by Debbie. So you too can taste the love put into every bottle. All right. We're back with my guest, one of my yeah. faves, Dr. Stephen Poulter. We're talking <sighs> about men, and we're talking about men's health and masculinity, a 360 overview. And you just yeah. made a statement that I guess we should elaborate on about men's um, emotional health right now. So we, do you want to continue yes. where you left off? Absolutely, Deb. Empathy is the ability to feel what others are feeling and understand it. And with boundaries, it allows you to feel it, connect, and empower the other person. Without boundaries, men, it's like a lump of mashed potatoes. They feel overwhelmed, suffocated. And many men, because they feel overwhelmed, may resort to anger or rage to create separation. That's not masculinity. That's enmeshment. Empathy with boundaries allows um, an adult man or a young man or an older man to empower other people, other women in their lives, uh, other uh, sons, uh, brothers, all that, uncles. The empathy with boundaries is a very powerful tool because it helps you to understand the other person, tolerate differences, and not personalize it because boundaries is you know where you stop and start and how do you get there how do you get there let's say you didn't have the upbringing that taught you that and now you're we're in this me too time and you want to mm -hmm. know how to achieve to have that empathy i mean do are we empathetic or not because we weren't raised that way or born you know with no. empathy empathy a lot of people you can learn empathy you can learn to think of others mm -hmm. okay it, it's not a, it's not, yes, it may be something you're born with, but it's, it's a muscle you develop. It's a skill you hone. Mm -hmm. It's a perspective and a disposition you embrace. 
you know, empathy is something you, you, as you get older, hopefully you become more generous, not more resentful. And also empathy is a perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of guys that didn't know their dad, but they're excellent fathers because they want to be the father they never had. Yep. And they want to give their kids and their wife what they never got. Yeah. You know, so I don't, your childhood is your starting line, not your finish line. You know, and trauma gets in the way, but trauma doesn't mean you're derailed. It just means you've got to resolve it, get back on the road of life, and embrace those other parts of you. It might be very difficult to tolerate, but if you don't tolerate them, who can? Right. Yeah. You have who to can. be able to, so everybody else around you can be able to do that too. So that's why I started with the relationship part is one of the centerpieces of your health. Yes. Emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially, career-wise. How you relate to yourself and others, that's business. That's your partner. Mm -hmm. That's your friends. Tell me where it doesn't, where relationships don't apply. Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. they apply. And then the, the second piece to learn is emotional intelligence. What am I feeling? I always say, I thank parents when they send their teenage sons to therapy because they're teaching their kids a foreign language, mm. their sons and daughters. Because when a, um, a young man understands what he's feeling or has, develops insight, that's a gift. That's yeah. something that goes with you, Debbie, through your whole lifeline. Insight to yourself allows you to have insight to others, and that's empathy. Yeah, which makes for the best partner in a man. Oh, my you know, I And that... You know, what's hard is, like, um, I met my ex when I was 19. So you didn't know what you were looking for. You just went for the sort of physical sure. attraction and At that, 19, which you know, that chemistry. Yeah. And you just went, yep. okay. And then um, we sort of grew up together. But I don't yep. think, I mean, as, a, as an older person in almost mid-60s now dating, Definitely looking for different criteria that, it, it, that, that, as you're saying, I'm looking for those men that have that, you know, that, that know how to handle themselves in their emotional right. selves. Um, and, and you know, themselves. And, and I realized, like I was saying earlier, when they can do that, their physical self is all in order too, you know. Right. And so when they've got this whole mental, emotional, um, anything any angst any situation figured mm -hmm. out i've dated so many angry men i can't tell you that you know the first date is a rant mm -hmm. about the ex-wife the kids that they don't talk to or some family member or a business dealing that they're you know even during the pandemic yeah. about the way the pandemic's being handled so it gets political and they're just angry you know and yeah, i'm and thinking like that's not <sighs> a good start <laughs> yeah know? that Anger is a, it's feeling powerless. Mm, I've never sense. met a man that screams and rages that felt empowered. Yeah. No. It's, never. It, it's, it's a sense of helplessness because Correct. they don't have control. And, and, and I have men that rage against their wives, their partners. Um, again, nothing to do with orientation. And I always say to that, the person that's raging, what's really underneath all that? And yeah. there's a deep disappointment that on some level, they don't feel like they're enough. Mm -hmm. And that came from the, from a parent, yeah, yeah. obviously. You know, yeah. And that's shame. And shame is that the imposter syndrome, we're going to be outed. We have to please everybody to be loved. All that gets involved. And when you find, I find men that are very resentful about whether it be the, what's going on in the world right now. I'm like, what's the other side of it? You're alive. You're healthy. You've got a great life. Yeah. That's a whole different perspective, and that breeds a different type of um, masculinity. You know, talk about toxic versus empowered. Yeah. Toxic is somebody owes me something mm. and tends to be very exploitive. Where an empowered man wants to help others, like, like, like dating a guy who meets you and wants to know about what you're doing, what's your career like, what are you doing um, with your business, all the exciting things you have going. That's empowerment. Yeah, I've uh, I have to say there's been a small percentage of men that I've dated, and you know I've had two, mm -hmm. uh, maybe three longer term relationships, um, and there's been very small percentage of men who actually 
were interested in what I, I mean, if they were interested, some of them were interested because it applied to the, oh, can you help me with this? Oh, I have a question for you, or, you know, and because of my education. And others were genuinely interested in me, which in turn made me genuinely interested in them, which I am anyway, you know, I, you right. know me, I'm a talker and yeah. I pull, pull things out, but uh, I, I, it should be a give and take, not just right. a, you know, so yeah, a, a monologue. And I, you know, you know me, I, I'm writing a book to the, the book Age Young, and there's a yeah. whole chapter in there on dating at this stage in life in your 50s and 60s. And I've had well over 200 first dates, well over. And um, I've seen every kind of personality and the percentage that want to know about me and take the genuine interest in me is this. <laughs> it's like 2%, maybe maybe of over 200 so that's not saying much and uh you know again it's a different generational thing going back not raised mm -hmm. during the me too movement not you know like you said there's something um that you know there it, it's that toxic masculinity that they've developed over the years and they don't have the they don't have the power they, they're feeling they have to have power over me in some way right. by telling me you know, all about them it's a misunderstanding because there's no such thing as having power over somebody that's a myth I mean, that's an outdated belief system versus influence with somebody or concern or empathy that's that's power that's using power in a great way to motivate somebody but in terms of control that's always from a place of fear mm -hmm. trying to control your partner is like you're on a dead-end street going nowhere and eventually you got to turn around or the relationship dies there. Yeah. You know, and part of this with men as they get into their, you know, say, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s and on word is much of the unresolved emotion spills into the body. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had a lot of men in my practice come down all of a sudden with a sudden cancer, stroke, serious health illness. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot and of so shows on this. Yep. Yeah, I mean, this is your, this is your uh, sweet spot, Debbie. And I find that for the men that I deal with, if it's not three fourths of the pie chart, then it's at least fifty percent of it. Aside from DNA and their genes, is unresolved rage. Mm -hmm. uh, I say rage, you used to say unresolved anger, but rage is something that's been percolating for years. And it consumes your immune system and eventually consumes your body. Mm -hmm. And I have guys that come in, you know, back issues, neck issues, and they start talking about their life. And no wonder the, the way of the world on them, where they feel like they've been, haven't gotten the break. Right. Whatever it may be. And it plays out. It plays Correct. out At physically. some point, you got to pay mm -hmm. the bill. That's right. And that's why I'm, I feel so motivated to write this book, a workbook book on the 360 overview. Yeah, Deal so with your emotional health, your relationship health, other things come together. Absolutely. It's, again, so tied into each yes. other. And if people realize a lot of illness or a lot of aches and pains, if they would go deeper, it's usually, like you said, a trauma from an earlier age, something Correct. that created anger and rage, and it's stuck. And it's playing out. And if Mm -hmm. You kind of got to go backwards. You got to go from the inside yeah. out to fix the outside here. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't want to say that people that have accidents. When I'm not trying to say everything's psychosomatic or homeopathic, whatever. Well, no, but, we get injured. We can yeah, get hurt. But yeah. I find the majority of men, 80%, don't even give that any airtime. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, well, they're not, I, I, they're not connecting. They're not thinking about they're it. Not, yeah, they're not. And that's what's so good about this workbook because this might, right. you know, it's going to be like a Pandora's box. It's just going to open a door and out will flood this, right. this opportunity for them to heal inside, outside. They're going to yes. want to start taking care of themselves. I love that, that you're giving them tools, you know, because, well, first they have to realize that, they need the tools, I guess, is the you first know, thing, you know. And what I find out is that many times, I heard today, change starts when your level of comfort is here and your level of um, 
Mm, goes above. Discomfort exceeds it. Yeah. That is the moment change kicks in. Yeah, makes a as lot long of as your discomfort's below this waterline, nothing changes. Mm-hmm. And I talk about getting hit by lightning through different books, but that's the minute men change. Now, a lot of guys they don't go to therapy until after their wife leaves them, even though she asked for six years. Yeah, and many times you know it's too late. It's hindsight. Yeah, I wish I right. would have, could have, should have. Yeah. But I always say that ultimately you're gonna be a better partner, whoever you're gonna be with. Or an ex-partner it's never too late to start no never too late in anything the other thing i do find also sometimes is the reverse Mm -hmm. and again part of my practice and getting into sort of the Mm -hmm. physical and i also in the time we have left i also want to talk about men and sexual health and aging and 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 how you're going to handle that but what i was going to say and then we'll take a quick break but Mm -hmm. what i was going to say is I see men that are sort of, you know, kind of just hanging their head low, walking around, and uh, people in general, but men too, Mm -hmm. that don't, um, that are feeling lost, that have the dad bod, that are overweight, you know, they're going through a fluctuation of loss of hormones too. I'm I'm talking about older men. Yeah, And, um, And I realize when they get back in the gym and they start eating better, they're more they're, they've set themselves up to now dig into the emotional part of them and see where the trauma lies and see and that's when that deep set injury that neck ache or that you know hip those sore hips are right they start right. to open up because you're opening up physically and emotionally so we'll, uh, let's let's talk more about that we're going to take Good. one last one minute break we're going to be right awesome. back this is my sponsor hello fresh and we'll be right back after this message today's episode is brought to you by hello fresh do you feel like you are stuck in a dinner rut with hello fresh you get fresh pre-measured ingredients with mouth-watering seasonal deliveries right to your door just skip all those trips to the grocery store and Count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and, key word here, affordable. You can now enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in 30 minutes or less. With over 25 recipes to choose from each week, there's something for everyone to enjoy. All recipes are designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. I've always told my clients when it comes to diet, it's not a one-size-fits-all deal. That's why I always recommend HelloFresh. It's a great way to home cook, have meals with healthy ingredients that you love, and it's well-researched that cooking at home saves money and saves you from gaining any of that unwanted weight. So go to the link in our show notes to get $80 off, including free shipping on HelloFresh, the number one meal kit. All right, that's it. No more of those. Okay. That's so great. I want to talk about men's uh, eight men's aging and yes. sexual health and um, how that all works in this 360 masculinity. Yes. And you know, Deb, it's interesting because I think a lot of men, it's very difficult with aging to talk about sexuality. It, there's sexual desire versus sexual performance. And the two are very different. You can have huge sexual desire for your partner, but because of maybe biology or organic problems, you're not able to perform. And understanding the difference helps you also to manage it and not feel like your masculinity is um, lost because your performance Mm -hmm. doesn't match your desire. I know it sounds really elementary, but I can't tell you, Debbie, how many men talk to me about um, premature ejaculation or inability to perform and how much their self-esteem is tied to that. Oh, I bet. I bet. I mean, women, too. Women, too. Yes. You know, and very much so. And, and by the way, this is not the exclusion of women uh, by any means. No, just I know. But we're talking about guys, men today. Yeah. Yeah. Their awareness. <laughs> I think women are very good about mind-body stuff. I really do. Better. You know, We're definitely better. better. And more um, communicative, mm-hmm. t- commun- you know, yeah. able to communicate 
what it is that's going mm-hmm. on. You know, I mean, our you know, women, I'm postmenopausal, so um, that right. again changes something in women. It changes a desire for some. Their libido changes. I'm not yeah. one of them, but it also mm-hmm. changes performance. And and you know, we're not like two little bunny rabbits anymore that we were when we were 17. So. Um, yes. I can see that can come into play and really put a bit of a dart in uh, relationships. That's a really good word. <laughs> with men, with the sexuality part, you know, I talk about um, body acceptance versus body dysmorphia. Mm. Body acceptance for men goes a long ways in sexual performance. Now, I'm not a, uh, by any means an expert in the research, but I do know that men that have body acceptance are much better partners sexually, straight up. And where a lot of men struggle with body dysmorphia into the Adonis complex, such as bodybuilding, steroids, trying to look like the Hulk, as a way to offset that sense of inadequacy, Mm. which um, is so shame-driven. And that inadequacy won't be uh, rectified by being a bodybuilder we're getting into that. Like, nothing wrong with working out, but I'm talking about where it's extreme mm-hmm. and it becomes almost a health hazard. I've seen so, these guys. I, you know, you I'm know. in a lot of gyms. Well, yeah, you I know. was in a lot they're, of gyms. So they're great yeah. guys, but you know, I start talking to them. I'm like, dude, you know, there's more to your life than just doing that. Right. I mean, the discipline is fantastic, but it's, again, you know, like name your show, The Balanced Life. You know, exercise and men are great. Less depression less anxiety, better sexual performance. Big time. Straight Big time. Forward. It Big all, time. you exercise, all you're going to sleep better. You're going to want to yep. do better with your diet. You're going to be a better performer in mm-hmm. every aspect. You're going to be a better human being to your your partner and your children if you have them. You know, it's yeah. it's all, again, you, right, you said, balanced and connected. But, so, uh, you know, the yeah. aging thing for men, and I don't think men realize this because I do have men clients, right? And I don't think they realize that they also go through a hormonal loss. So our, when we age, our, um, yes. everything slows down. Heart rate mm-hmm. slows down. Metabolism, metabolism. slows yeah. down. Our digestive tract slows down. So we have to eat less, but we're not going to yep. maybe look as well just or be mm-hmm. as skinny because we do. So that's true for people in general as we age. Um, and, you know, it, it, it plays a factor in maybe a sport that we love. For me, it's right. tennis. It's playing a factor in that. I can't get to the ball as quickly as I used to. There's mm-hmm. a frustration with that. And with women, we kind of know it's coming and we expect it and we almost plan for it in advance. But what I find with men is they mm-hmm. don't realize that they also go through a loss of hormones and that these things, even as we age, it messes with their psyche. It messes with their... It disturbs it, it. Yeah, it disturbs it. You can tell. Debbie, I, you know, that's why geriatric medicine is still almost like a new medicine practice for men. I have a lot of guys in their 60s and 70s that they've been prescribed Prozac Mm. which almost works like a hormone replacement mm. for testosterone. Oh, interesting. For men. Yeah. And serotonin and the different ne- neurotransmitters. I think women are very upfront about, okay, menopausal, pre, during, and post. And men go through the same chemical shifts. They do. They're not as extreme. And um, they don't – I mean, men can have hot flashes and night sweats and those sure. kind of things. Those are little indicators that there is hormone changing. And there is um, hormone replacement therapy for men to put the right. testosterone back. And men need a little bit of estrogen and progesterone. You know, to, there is a right. balance in that yeah. as well. But they're not aware of it, really, to know to go seek it out, really, or ask you know, for it. I have many men in the last two years that come in who present as if they're depressed, clinically depressed. They go get a physical. It turns out they had a deficit. Their testosterone was so low. Yep. Or um, their estrogen was so low. They're not depressed. They're chemically depleted. Absolutely. That in itself creates depression. Absolutely. So that's, that's part of the 360, Deb. It, because as you – 
understand this, how it's all related, you know, mind, body, and soul, all, when they're all three lined up, you're a dynamo. You're your best self. And your that's when, self. you know, and I think being your best self, I mean, part of that is being able to give back and mm -hmm. be, when you're your best self, you're not focused on the pain or the hurt or what somebody's doing to you or not to you. You're actually just focused on your day in and day out gratitudes right. and moving forward. And that's when all these good things come to you. And then you're able to give back. You're able to, you know, volunteer right. for things and give to things and do that because there's so much satisfaction in that. Mm -hmm. It's taking care of the full so circle of you. you. Your finances get better. Your relationships with everybody gets better. It's, better. it's just so yeah. important, that self-care. Debbie, because there's no, uh, I have men that say, well, you know, what's, you know, I'm, you know, over 50 or I'm getting towards 60. I feel like I'm, I don't have a lot to live for. I go, no, 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 no. As you get older, your life can continue to grow and expand, mm -hmm. but in ways in which you haven't done before, yeah. such as you said, in charity, generosity, mentoring, plenty. I always tell older men, there's a lot of young men around you that could benefit from your life experience. Absolutely. And wisdom. Love it. And it doesn't have to be your son. You, guys you work with, people you know, yeah. goes a long ways. Yeah, I think that's really important to get out of your own head and get out and give some Expand. gifts to others. Yeah, because that, that's going to help you as well. Yeah, I think aging, it's so funny because women age a little different. You know, everybody's individual. Mm -hmm. There's not one yeah. size fits all in the aging sphere. But um, I do know this as a fact. If you have a grip on taking care of yourself from an early onset, no matter what your genetics are, you are going to age better. And that's my whole sort of premise of yes. age young. Because we have our condition and our constitution. And really, mm -hmm. our constitution is our genetics, you know, and that's, we're sort of given right. that. And our condition, we have control over, which in turn can manipulate the constitution a little bit, you know. So take taking control yes. of your health, yeah. Allows I, you in every yeah. other aspect. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I totally agree with you. I think as you were saying that, I'm listening, thinking the more men realize one thirds are physical, not two thirds or 80%. It's one third. Another third is your emotional health. Mm. That to me is the best kept secret in male psychology. And the last third, or, you know, the other third is your best self. That's the masculine part of you. Mm -hmm. You know, you can say the spiritual side, meaning the best part of you. But the three together, Debbie, everyone, we age better. And embracing the physical, that may be changing, but the other two can keep increasing because they're within you. That's right. And they're not time tied to a timetable. No. And that's what I think, you know, um, there's fear. There's fear around aging. You know, you and I know this as yeah. you approach 60 and I'm well in there. Uh, you know, it just, there's fear of how am I going to look? Right. I don't want to be hunched over. I don't want my skin to droop. I mm -hmm. don't want this to happen or that to happen. And, you know, like I was saying earlier, that fear can get you stuck where you're yep. like, it's going to happen anyway. So why bother to exercise yeah, or eat? Well, it's, you know, going to age It's a process. It is a process, but you can create, like you said, a 360 around you that is going to allow you to be your best self and lead your le best life. Right. Exactly. And I, I find that men that get locked in to money in their body, tend to find life to be, as they get older, be very empty. Completely. And expanding your emotional capacity, your masculinity, the, the soulful part of you, is where the fulfillment lies. I, I, I love that. That's where We're, it goes. We are getting into our final words on this yes. subject, so I, I want to ask you to, to give your final words on that. But before you do, mm -hmm. uh, how can people get a hold of you so they can get these books? Because these are books, I'm telling you, they are valuable tools 
to you, you could you know on bettering yourself and they're all i mean steven's got it he lays out the process for you and you and you work this and it's it's a life changer it really is so how can people reach you well when they my name i did like um on facebook or instagram dr stephen poulter also the books are all online whether it be at amazon or barnes and noble books are available you know, type in the father factor, you know, how your father's legacy impacts your career or the shame factor, how to heal your deepest fears and set yourself free. The books are online and you can always get a hold of me. Um, Google me, email me at Dr. Steve at Stephen Poulter.com. And Debbie, again, I appreciate you having me. And probably my um, final analysis here is that men that embrace the 360 are embracing the 360 in their world and their world benefits the partners the kids the business the relatives neighbors everybody benefits and there's an old saying people don't remember what you said they remember how you made them feel mm -hmm. and when you're doing your doing the whole picture of your life people feel better around you because you feel better and that's contagious and that's a game changer so I, like I want to that. thank you, Debbie, as always, for having me on your show. Uh, Stephen, thank you. There'll be more as soon as yes. this book is out. We're going to go for it again. Absolutely. <laughs> you know we will. Thank you for showing up today. Thank you. I know you're not in studio. It's the first time you're not in studio no, with me. Uh, next time I'll bring. I'll come in with the books. Yeah. It. Good. Yeah. Do that. We'll. Uh, we'll. We'll show we'll everybody how perfect they are. All right. I, I got to thank you again for taking the time out of your busy work day. I know you are. Oh, thank you're you. in your My office pleasure. there with, I think, are your dogs with you? No, 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 no. no they're, they're a doggy daycare. They're, they're playing cards and messing around. Oh, yeah. Good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> poker. Good Doggy poker. <laughs> All there right, you go. Stephen, thank you so much. Well, and I want to thank you, my audience, for joining me today. I hope you got some val valuable information. And go ahead, go to my YouTube channel and make a comment, ask a question, or my Facebook page, or my Instagram, and we will get right back to you post-show. I love to do that and keep the conversation going. And on that note, I want you to keep going out and having the conversation conversations that connect to a healthier you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.